Seven things you should never tell your recruiter. Or at a minimum, keep your mouth shut. Think about it before you say it. So stand by. Got a lot of experience with recruiting commands. And I know quite a bit about recruiting. So there's a lot of folks out there I think are giving you some bad information. First thing is remember the recruiter's job, right? The recruiter's job is to get you signed up, get you through MEPS, and get you to basic training. How they get you there can be lots of different ways, first of all. Second of all, they're a salesperson, right? They're a car salesman. Good guys, um, been involved with lots of it. I understand it, but their job is to sell you on the branch of the military that they represent. Let's get that on the table. So don't forget that. Uh, the next thing that people really get lost in, there is no massive recruiter school that's going to teach you every MOS, what it's like to work in the MOS. They're going to get these guys acquainted with MOSs. There's some stuff they're just not going to know about. They're going to be able to read the description like you would and say, here's the job. So do yourself a favor and do some homework on this. Don't expect these recruiters to know everything about every MOS that's in the the Marine Corps, for example. So let's get that on the table before we talk about the seven mistakes people make talking to the recruiter. Things you shouldn't just tell them, right? And you should not tell the recruiter. And I'm not saying lie. I'm just saying keep your mouth shut. There's a lot of crap going around the internet, around YouTube in particular, about this. And I want to demystify with the truth. The first thing is you're not a doctor. And unless you've been diagnosed by one or you are a doctor, you don't know if you had asthma. Uh, your bumps and bruises are part of life. Don't get into every problem you've got because they're going to have to document this. Again, don't lie, but you don't need, need to get into every time you wheeze when you were three years old. Your mom told you about it. So remember, unless it's been put into a chart or you've been diagnosed with it, you don't have it. Again, don't lie. Use common sense here. Don't make this into a problem that it's not by when you get to MEPS, all right? That's number one. Number two is... You tell the recruiter, I just want to get out of this s-hole town I'm in. I want to leave as soon as possible. They can do that. They will get you on and, uh, and, and get you in a job, get you in an MOS. But it may not be what you want, right? So if you want to leave as soon as possible, by all means, go at it. But don't tell them that. They're going to get you whatever job fits the billet to get you in the military, to get you shipped out, to get their quota met, so they can get on to the next thing and get promoted. So don't tell them that. If you want to, try to keep, again, this goes back to point zero. Keep your mouth shut and think before you speak, okay? It's really important. I wish I could tell myself this looking back. Number three thing, similar to part one, it's not documented in your medical chart or in a legal record somewhere. There's no record of it. It didn't happen. You don't need to go into every time you stole oranges from the neighbor's tree or the time you think you remember smoking pot. If you haven't popped positive for it, it's not a medical record, it's not a legal record. Maybe keep it to yourself, keep your mouth shut. Again, I'm not saying lie. Gauge brain before gauging mouth sometimes, and this is gonna get you a lot further with this stuff. You can create more problems for yourself. You get into every time you did something that's gonna, you know, smoke pot or did a drug, you're gonna go down the path of another waiver problem and maybe create problems for you. So think about that before you speak to the recruiter. Hey, if you like the content, do me a favor. Please subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when new videos come. Fourth thing is, remember the recruiters aren't your friends, they're not your buddy. You don't need to tell them every personal problem you got. Every girlfriend problem, every potential domestic issue, every girl you knocked up. You don't have to lie to them, just answer the questions. With the yes or no answer, you don't have to expound and get into long details about it. That can create problems because the list of stuff that may be an issue for these recruiters or an issue for you to get in the military, you don't know. It's a moving target, okay? So keep your mouth shut about your personal problems. If you got them and it's enough an issue, you feel like you gotta tell them. You don't wanna lie to these people. Again, but you don't need to expound on stuff that's just not relevant to you joining the Navy. Number five thing you don't wanna tell the recruiter is to go tell them to F off because you don't like the information they're giving you. These guys, again, are trying to get you in. They're dealing with a young, man or woman who really don't know much about the military beyond the internet they're trying to educate you on it but don't go tell them to f off you're going to go to from the navy to the army these guys work in a small spot they talk there's no reason if you don't like your recruiter keep your mouth shut and maybe you go to a different recruitment office right but you don't want to get into a combative situation with the recruiter it's going to make it more difficult for you there are people trying to make a quota trying to do a job that three-year center's recruiter 
to get promoted to the next level inside of their career field, don't get in a combative and tell your recruiter to go, you know, F off because you don't like they're not, what they're telling you, right? They want to get you in. They're on your team. But you may not like the answers. So think about that. You, you not liking the answers doesn't mean you should get into a screwed up situation with your recruiter. Seventh thing you shouldn't tell your recruiter is, I only want this one specific job. Um, I'm not saying you've got to sign for another job or sign a contract for it. But if you only want one specific job, that's it. It's going to limit your ability. It may not be availability in that job. It may come up later. So all of a sudden, the recruiter realizes he's dealing with someone that's rather difficult to deal with right off the bat. I'm not saying sign a contract for someone. If you want to be an artilleryman, sign a contract for a cook. But I'm saying be open to the career field. It may be avionics, and you want to work on jet engines, but there's something to work on jet electronics. You may go, huh. Cool. Because you probably don't know about all the stuff available. You know, get into your career field. If you clearly don't want to do the infantry, combat arms, you want to do logistics, supply logistics, okay, but there's probably so many jobs inside of there that you don't even know about. So don't tell your recruiter, hey, this is the only job I want, because you probably don't know all the jobs that are available in the military. Here's a bonus tip what not to tell a recruiter. I've seen some people do, and I've heard this from recruiting commands. Get into all your family mental history problems. You know, if your mother is a chronic alcoholic and your dad's a total basket case, maybe you want to leave that off the table. Um, again, if it's not diagnosed in a chart that says these things, or you're a medical doctor, you really don't know. So maybe keep that to yourself. Because the last thing you want to do if you want to go in the military is create more boxes and waivers you got to get to get there. Hey, thanks for watching.